Mark for stage. Thank you so and much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Gosh. So I want to get straight into this idea of eating disorders. I, I want to know perfect body pressure. Is it is it real? There are girls of four who are using cosmetic surgery apps to already transform their bodies. They already know there's something wrong with their bodies. There are women in old age homes who are still obsessed with their bodies. I'm supposed to look 30 years younger than I am. That is the general position of how girls and women are supposed to look, which is doubtful about their bodies, always in difficulty, always looking at themselves, always seeing what they can change. That creates terrible instability and insecurity at the very heart of where we live. So what is the root of that story? What is, the, what is right there at the bottom of it? What's bubbling up to, to manifest in, in these problems? There's so many different issues because we're now talking about a generation of parents who've had such exposure to the notion that their bodies aren't okay, that unwittingly, without wishing to, they create a kind of focus on the body and on eating and on appearance that then infects the next generation. Now, if we, so it's, it's in the home that one is already learning inadvertently that bodies are something to be corrected or, or something to watch for. And then we have, I'm afraid, the great big industries, and they're not small, the great big industries, that press in on us. There's the food and diet industry. Of course, the diet industry is owned by the food industry, and if dieting worked, you'd only have to do it once. So we know they have to pump in diets all the time because they don't work except for 3% of the people. Then there's the beauty industry, and I know part of, part of you people are here today, and there's so much you could do to change the situation. Uh, the growth rate of the beauty industry in Turkey is 10.6% uh, when the GDP is only 5%, 5.1%. So we're seeing a growth in more and more products, younger and younger ages, selling to boys, making people feel that instead of beauty being something that's fun, beauty is something that is essential and needs lots of products. The same with the fashion industry. I could go on. So, so there's no singular source of this problem. It's no, I think it's more complex than that. So we're all guilty, but not to blame. We've all been infected, yes. I mean, there's a virus there. And the thing is that, m that we can do something to challenge this. Parents can do an awful lot to challenge this. They can provide an antiviral agent by not being obsessed, not standing in the, in the mirror, not focusing on their kids' food, not talking about bodies as something that need to be constrained, but really helping people to see bodies as somewhere to live from. But so can the industries. Industries, it was... <sighs> L'Oreal has one of the biggest growth rates in the beauty industry. Everybody wants to be part of self-presentation, but do we all need to look exactly the same? You used as an expression there, antiviral. Can you unpack that a little? Well, I think if you grow up in a family and there isn't a preoccupation, probably like you and I did, actually, yeah. because generationally it was possible then, where their focus isn't on watchfulness, isn't on terror, isn't on being frightened of your body, but is on the basis of the body as being something that you go about life with and that, that allows you to think and run and play. You have, a, you have the antiviral agent, that's it. But if you grow up and you see the preoccupation of everybody around you on the body, you are already inside of a system, and you think that is how it's meant to be. So the messages are the viruses, and actually the, the antidotes are either bedded in at home or in the Very environment. Very early, which is protective. It's not fully protective, but it is protective. Is this epidemic? I mean, what's the... What's the well, look, 60% of English girls, I don't know what the story is in Turkey, because I can't get the figures, won't go to school on a day that they're feeling particularly rubbish about their bodies. We're exporting body problems all over the world. It's one of the most bizarre aspects of what Western culture is doing. 
It, it is absolutely at epidemic proportions. When I started to write about this 40 years ago, what I talked about in terms of eating problems was really mild. In fact, would pass as normal eating at this point. So we've all got a pathological relationship to eating. I'll try and exempt a few of us. Yeah. But, um, and of course, you live in a very health, uh, sort of a, a, a food-loving culture here, which I think helps a lot in Turkey, and I relish it. But I think there is a, a, an underlying attack on this very aspect of ourselves. What are the other myths around eating disorders? Is it, for example, is it only girls? No, it hasn't been the only girls for at least 20 years. 10% of um, people with anorexia, that's the ones who are so frightened of eating, um, that are boys. And increasingly, if you, you just have to go to the gym to see the kind of eating problem manifested as gym, through the gym instructions and the guys who are there all the time. And I suppose the age range is what's so absolutely frightening. Is I see people in my neighborhood who are my age who are basically doubled over because they've suffered with an eating problem for so long that they don't, their, bo their bones won't hold them up. Are these perceptions of beauty propagated by media? Is it the media? Is it the, is it the driver, the content driver, or is it the individuals. Where's the... See, I don't think it's a conspiracy. Okay. Okay? I do think it's lazy and sloppy. Okay. So I think, of course, it's the style industries. Why is it that on the catwalk, it's exceptional to see clothes that would fit somebody of my size? That is ridiculous, let alone somebody who's shorter than me, wider than me. It, that's crazy. If we, don't have the represent, if we don't have images that represent us, actually, the bottom line is going to be less, because we know Armani sells all of, most of their clothes in sizes that are, never, ever appear on the catwalk. So I'm sensing this responsibility that you're suggesting business, media, everybody ought to be taking. And oh, that absolutely. actually there's an opportunity in it. No, is no, completely. You've understood me completely. Because I wouldn't be here if I didn't feel passionately that probably everybody in this room can make a difference. It doesn't matter where you're located. There's somebody, if you think about your own experience, if you think about the people in your family or your friends who are in difficulty with this area and accept that they will be in difficulty in this area, kind of like gravity, which is crazy, we shouldn't be in difficulty, then you could think, what can I do to change this? What can I do in my school? What can I do in my brand? What can I do as a marketeer? What can I do when I, how is the material that I'm producing going to affect? the people that really matter to me. And when you know that it could be deadly rather than a bit of fun, you think again, you think much more deeply, and you think creatively. So, we have the cream of Turkish okay. business. Okay, hello. <laughs> what is the single message you would love to land today? You can change society. You're part of what you, you are so bloody powerful, if, if I'm allowed to say you that. You are. You have the opportunity to bring something fresh, not hackneyed. You'll be noticed for it. You'll be part of making social change in a quiet way and in a very noisy way. And, but you need to think. I think that would be my message. Think. Yeah. Think, think and then do. Talk to your friends. Don't go along with the normal, general view that we have. Think expansively and think about yourself and how much it hurts you and everybody you know, and then transform it. That is a wonderful message to leave with. Susie, thank you so much thank for your you. insight. Thank that was you. really.